times, you know, yeah. half million, let's say, two hundred fifty million dollars worth of research. I wish I had thought of that. It was really nice plan. So, so every decided to, to enter this because every does a lot of work with inverters and smart smart grid and electric vehicles. And so I was on the team to how to try to try to prove this. And Google's target was was times ten. So you you couldn't enter your inverter if you didn't at least get fifty watts per cubic inch. And, and the, the inverter they wanted, I'm sorry, it come out kind of help was a two kilowatt. So, so you can see, if you're trying to, if you're, think about efficiency, a typical uh, crappy inverter, uh, is, that might be 5% uh, inefficient. Okay. So if I'm 5% inefficient at 2 kilowatts, you know, that's, uh, that's 10 watts, or right? 100 watts, 100 watts, okay. And they were wanting to get a size, you know, small enough, not, not this big, like commercial inverters, but small. So you think about it, you take 100 watts and stuff it into a box this big, it's going to start getting hot. And you're not going to want to put that on your desk, or you're not going to put that in the middle of your electric vehicle, or, you know, it's going to... So, so their goal was uh, cram this 100 watts into a box, the smallest box you can, and don't let the temperature get over 60 degrees C. Well, that's a typical target temperature for things sitting around on your desk or in the world. They don't set things on fire and don't burn your fingers and stuff like that. So, so, so that was the edict. There was uh, other requirements too. You know, the power had to be clean enough to power a PC. You couldn't you couldn't have crappy, messy power when, when the AC came out. And you had to operate for you know uh, uh, all day. You couldn't just run like this for three seconds and quit. You know, things like that. It had to reach steady state. There was a lot. Of, there was a lot of electrical requirements, but. But the physical requirements was you had to you had to get two kilowatts in and out. You had to stay below 60 degrees on the surface. And if whatever you made, like if you made something that was a glob that was weird, they were going to put a bounding box around it to measure your volume. So you couldn't have any weird things sticking out or something like that. Everybody was kind of getting you know making cubes and things to, to, to maximize your, your volume. And then you could do whatever you wanted to cool. Well, that was your deal, but but it had to be self-contained. The only thing that could come in was the you know the DC source, and the only thing that come out was your AC. You couldn't over here have a giant refrigerator or something like that. That would be stupid. So, so so we we started in this, and quickly, you know, a couple of things uh, from an electrical engineering viewpoint. You know, this is a big deal. If, if we can do good electrical engineering and and lower or you know make it uh, one percent efficient. Oh well, hey, we cut that by five. Now we're going to throwing twenty watts in our box. That's nice. Or exactly, like, you know, one hundred percent efficient. Uh, you know, hey, we don't have any problems. Right? <laughs> That's something that happened. But, but so that was one one area to attack. So we teamed with the UT's power electronics group over there, the, the, their center, the current center. We said, okay, we'll, we'll get you guys on board to help us with the power electronics. Uh, and then the other side of the house is well. We know you've got to have some inefficiency, 1%, 2%, 3%, something. Let's get it out. Let's get the heat out. So that was that was our job. That was that was my job. So so the idea was to do, take a multiple problem approach, was you do a bunch of finite element laws and try to design, you know, fans and grills and stuff that would flow the air around the components and you know get get the heat out best you can. Or you know, do we want to use liquid cooling or phase change or all kinds of weird things? And, you know, can we shrink this down? How do we arrange the components? How do we get the airflow going through? What fans do we choose? And so we we did tons and tons of finite element models, and then um, each of those were taking you know half a day to do. And then we also did a bunch of experiments because you know nobody believes finite elements. You know, the whole team. Goes, no, you're you're not wrong. Yeah, but yeah, we better do some experiments. So we we built, and I meant to bring it. I, I've got a. Uh, one of our prototypes are halfway through that's got uh, fake components in it, but but uh, we could heat them with resistors and stuff, and, and we could see, compare my experiments to my numbers. But but one of the things I did halfway through was I got tired of running the finite elements, and I made a little heat transfer model of the thing uh, that was pretty close, so that I could run it in, in MATLAB in like 10 seconds and, and evaluate some of the major changes. Uh, and so that's what I've used here. So what I've done, I've, I've done a design of experiments. So I've, I've collected data from, from my Google Little Box temperature, okay? And uh, uh, I've got some factors 
that matter in this temperature. And so my so I've got a I've got a, a 2F because I've got a high and a low. Just because I did it. And my F, I've got four factors. F equals four. And gee, why did I pick that so I could fit it in this example for us, right? <laughs> so so what are my four factors? My, you know, my A, B, C, and D. Okay, I've got I've got four of them. Let's see, I've got um, the, the, the heat loss, this right here. Uh, I call it Q. I think, let me look at my, make sure I got I'll, I'll use the same notation. I won't goof you up when I'm talking. Let's see, so I use the Q, T, A, A, T, T. Okay, I'll leave it on the table. So I use Q, this is this. So, so this was completely dependent on my double E partners. You guys help me out, you know, give me lower Q, please. Uh, what's the other thing I've got? Uh, I've got the ambient temperature. Well, you know, that's, that's a duh, right? I mean, if, if it's hotter in the room, your watch is going to be hotter. You know, if it's cold. If we could put it in a room that was 10 degrees C, yeah. But they, they, they defined that too. It had to be able to work in 30 degrees C, I think was my range. Yeah, yeah 30 was the max. Okay, so, that's, so, so this is factor A. This is factor B. Factor C was my convective coefficient. H on the box. How, how well can I get the heat off of the box? That's a, that's a big one. Uh, and then the other factor is an emissivity. Uh, this one is, you know, uh, airflow on the box, natural convection off the top. This one's radiation. And uh, at first, when we first started modeling, I didn't think radiation mattered. It, it took a while, you know, it, when, you, when you add radiation to the finite element model, makes it slower. You know, you, you got to know something about the emissivity or you're just, what are you doing? You're just making stuff up. So initially we didn't add radiation in, then I did. I said, well, it did kind of help a little bit. And that was one of the questions, how much did it help? Does it matter? Did we have to get all worked up about painting the block, black, box black or making it rough? People were getting excited about that. They're kind of like, well, I think it matters, but I don't think it matters that much. Let's not, let's not get excited about not painting the box or making it rough. Let's let's work more on our fans and our airflow. But that was maybe the point of the experiment. We, we've got these factors. Let's do a screening experiment. Let's see if they matter. So the heat is factor A. The ambient temperature is factor B. Uh, H is factor C. And emissivity on the radiation is factor D. So I have four factors. So I've got that. How much heat can the double E's help me out with it? Uh, what's my room temperature? Uh, what's my convective coefficient on the top? I just looked at the top. I, you know, I could have looked at the size and the bottom, but if you looked at the heat transfer, the bulk of it, our, our box was, was a form factor like that. The bulk of it was off the top, very little off the bottom because you don't get much flow. And the sides were, were similar convective coefficient to the top, slightly less, but they're in a smaller area, a lot smaller area. So the bulk of the heat loss was off the top. That was the one that mattered the most. So two factors, I mean four factors, A, B, C, D, uh, two levels. Uh, my, my heat loss was either 30 or 36 watts. So, so I'm getting some pretty cruddy, right? I'm getting, let's see, 30 watts. Oh no, I'm not bad, I'm down like 2%. Yeah, yeah. If 2% times 2 kilowatts, that would have been 40 watts. And that's where the double lead guys were kind of working. They were hanging around between 1 and 2%, depending on what, what design they chose, which which little gallium arsenide or silicon uh, chips they were choosing and things. Uh, my ambient was either 25 or 30 uh, because they, they, the NREL was going to do the test for us, but they couldn't guarantee, they could guarantee a, a max of 30, but it might be less. Okay, let's see if we can get a break. Uh, my heat transfer coefficient, uh, one to seven watts per square meter degrees, uh, not degrees, but Kelvin, watt per square meter Kelvin. Um, why? Because I, I did some studies, did some calculations, and saw it looked to me kind of to be around five. But again, I can't guarantee that. It depends on the, you know, the air, it depends on the conditions, it depends on the temperature. It's temperature dependent, it depends on the material surface. There's a lot of things that go into this natural convective coefficient, but that's not very high. You know, one watt per square meter K is pretty darn low. And then my emissivity, 0.1 to 0.8, that's a hard one to nail down, because that depends on the, you know, is it the aluminum? Is it anodized? Is it roughened? Uh, did it get some slimy grease on it? That, that's a real, that's a real wide range. So, so anyway, so here's my low and high, low and high, low and high, low and high. So there's my two for each. There's my two levels.
for each of my four factors. So I ran my MATLAB model uh, with a little bit of error in it. It had a little bit of error built in. And so here's some data. This being the maximum surface temperature. So remember, I want, I want this. So I like to get less than equal to 60. So, you know, I'm right on the edge. Look, I got some bad ones and I got some good ones. And, and this data, remember, this was, this was uh, A high. So in this case, I had 36 watts, uh, 25 ambient, 1 uh, uh, H, and 0.1 uh, D. So let's see. So, so let's see. Who, who was, who was bad? And it had some error on there, too. So let's see. D is low here. So, uh, okay. Looks like my radiation might be kind of helping me, right? D was high here. Looks like my radiation's kind of helping there, too. Let's see. When you crank up A, it's bad. You crank up B, it helped. Uh, that's probably just because the error didn't help much. As you, definitely, if you cranked up C, it helped. When C got to the high level, it was good, right? I'm losing more heat. So you kind of see what's happening in my data. So, so let's, let's do an ANOVA. Let's, let's take this block number two, or it was block two, wasn't it? With our partial experiment, let's do our ANOVA. Let's see who matters. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, so it looked like in that experiment, yeah, uh, they all matter. Okay, I, I believe that. Certainly the amount of heat I'm sticking in there matter. Yeah. Don't leave. Is food there yet? Yeah. You guys right. You want to you grab it? Yeah. It's right for the second point. I'm not going to play But this maybe clears things up because you're seeing what a factor is, what a level is, and something that I think everybody, I think everybody can relate to heat transfer and, and you know, the loss of energy in this box. And, I wish I'd brought my own. It was about this big. So grab me some food here and we'll finish this. 